Our opening session today is called Unlocking the Power of Imagination and Transformation and Unlocking Our Future. If you could all just take a moment and consider what the future might look like, what comes to mind? Maybe it's Mad Max, maybe it's The Matrix, maybe it's The City of Lost Children, maybe it's the Lego movie. Who knows what your future is? Lots of us are imagining a dystopian future these days, which actually feels a little too close to home. Certainly we haven't mastered societal change, economic, environmental, or otherwise. And if we're thinking about securing a future, a place where we want to live, a place that will sustain life, we need to be thinking about a circular economy, one without waste, one where equity, diversity, resilience, and um, togetherness flourishes. And we're going to have to work together to imagine it. Today, we have two people with us, really amazing speakers, whose job it is to consider the possible path to the future, the choices we need to make around technology, around policy, around ethics, and around human innovation. Uh, things like growth, strategy, all of these things that we need to consider as we go forward. Our two speakers today are really going to set us up in such a positive and inspirational way. Gerd Leonard is a futurist, a humanist, and the CEO of Futures Agency, previously listed as one of the top 100 tech influencers by Wired Magazine. Gerd explores human values in culture, society, commerce, technology, and looking to the future so that business and society leaders can make many choices and better choices for the future. This is Gerd Leonhardt in Zurich, Switzerland. Bonjour à tous. Hello, everybody. Grüezi miteinander, as they say here in Switzerland. So I'm going to talk to you about unlocking the future and what it means. And one of the main things I'm realizing right now as I've been looking at my uh, audiences and, and the emails and stuff that I get in the last couple of months, you know, people are quite worried about the future right now. And, and that's not really new, but now we have these stats like this one, right? I'm sure you'll, you'll enjoy reading about those, you know, how people are saying we have failed to take care of the planet. You know, our future is frightening, family is, uh, security is threatened, humanity is doomed, right? And that's only the 18, the uh, 16 to 25 year olds, right? I mean, these are the people that are, that are digital natives. And generally speaking, there's a lot of fear about the future. And this has to do, of course, with climate change and of course with COVID. But here's my message to this. You know, if we're looking at the, at the backdrop of this, it's quite clear that when we're looking at all of the trends coming together, that you know the sort of financial benefits and financial capital have increased a lot and human capital also a little bit but what has gone down uh, way down is of course the natural capital and we have to come to a conclusion here as, what, as to what that means and here's what i think it means first is that business as usual as we've known it is dead or dying the concept of continuing like we have uh, well, COVID already showed us this, and now basically COVID-19 is a test run for climate change. Now we're heading towards a world to where we are essentially realizing that the combination of all these things is kind of sending us towards a doomsday spiral. And, and uh, hence, we can safely say capitalism as we know it. Uh, is also unfit for this future because this is what has gotten us here. Right? And uh, it's not surprising to discuss this. And, and of course, then the question is what instead of capitalism, what are the options, right? And here's our good old friend, Milton Friedman, the 70s, who says the purpose of any business is just to make money, to increase profits. And that has given us all of the industrial economy and of course the internet economy, but that's kind of fading away now. And a sort of new operating system is coming in. And Elkington and others have talked about people planet profit for 30 years now. But now I would like to inject purpose. The discussion about what we want and why we want it. What kind of future do we want our kids to have? And that's why I think the sort of quadruple bottom line, people planet purpose and prosperity is much better suited to discuss the future. And this discussion is happening everywhere. Just look at this wall of debates, just, last, just the last couple of days. Right? So the business roundtable discussion, the vaccine patent waiver ideas, and of course the Pandora Papers and all of that. Yeah, people are thinking about a new paradigm now. And this is what COVID has done. It has triggered the rethinking of what we want. And this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to really look at the circular economy and what it means to be sustainable as we're coming in this COVID rebound hopefully, <laughs> three big things are going to happen in the next 10 years. First, as Shivi was saying, complete digitization. This is not the holy grail, uh, quite the opposite. It can also be unethical in many ways, 
but this is the tool we need to deal with practical problems, including water, electricity, disease, and so on. The next sort of bigger challenge really is this, right? The decarbonization of our world. But you know, the World Economic Forum says, if we put our money into, a, into the right places, roughly 11 trillion, we can swing this around and we can create hundreds of millions of new jobs. That's optimistic, but I think that's basically true. But here's the final challenge, right? The final challenge is this, reformation, reforming what we want, the reformation of our economic logic. I mean, what is the reason that we're dealing with too much waste and the lack of circularity, the lack of really great ESG and so on? That is because the bottom line is still the same, which is to monetize. And, and I'm so glad that Canada is taking a different view on this uh, and, and Europe, of course, as well. But this is a huge debate, how we can reform society, where it's going. We're starting with this, science fiction is becoming science fact. Right? And that is so true. Technology is empowering us to the point to where we can be almost superhuman, you could say. I mean, just looking at some of those examples here in terms of uh, the growth of, of transformation, trillion dollar markets with AI and the blockchain genome sequencing, solar panels declining in cost, batteries declining in cost. This is the best one, right? Complete exponential cost reduction trend across all domains in solar energy, data stored, batteries, basically heading towards kind of a zero almost. And that's going to empower a lot of progress. And climate tech, right? I mean, Canada has realized this, and I live in Switzerland, but Europe has also realized this. It's all here, right? This, this technology is coming and it's moving very quickly, not in 20 years, but in two to five years, looking at the next line, like the, basically the, the blue line coming in here with the five to 10 years, you know, that's also happening. It's all here and within reach and the sustainability revolution is real. It's no longer so a discussion of want to be, right? So the thing about unlocking our future is the challenge is this, we will have all the tools, right? The tech, the science, and we're spending more money on this and it's growing phenomenally, right? The question is, do we have the telos? Good old Greek word I learned when I was studying Greek a long time ago. Um, that is the purpose, the wisdom, right? And here's what telos actually means. It's, an, it's a term by Aristotle, right? It is basically the discussion of where we want to go with this. What kind of society do we want? Do we want to merge with machines? Do we want to go to other planets because ours is bad? Do we want to fo follow Elon Musk to Mars? You know, do we want to connect our brain to the internet so we don't need a body anymore? <laughs> that is the question, right? What kind of goal and where are we heading with this? And, and what I see happening all around us is that the things that were unthinkable just two years ago, they are the new normal egged on by COVID. And carbon tax is the new normal in a much more dramatic way than any of us could understand right now. We're going to see dramatic uptake on this and put in the money, for example, for uh, carbon tax for flying, that is coming as a default. Carbon tax for eating meat is coming. Right? And I'm not a vegetarian, so I'm, I'm going to have to pay just for flying. But unthinkable is becoming the new normal. And that trillions of dollars that we're raising here, that's going to fund an entire reboot of society, a reboot of thinking, an unthinkable new normal, kind of a pivoting moment, as you can see, for example, what's happening in America, total pivoting. Let's hope it lasts. Let's see what Joe Biden will do in Glasgow, right? Going away from this concept of just the past in the climate change discussion and the inequality discussion, all this stuff, new narratives, new priorities, new rules. Here are the next 10 years, okay? Decisive action on climate change, dramatic decarbonization. Don't believe for a minute that this is going to stay superficial like, like it has. No, this is going to go to a very, very, very strong note in society, pretty much across all industries, all countries. Sustainable economics and a kind of social capitalism unfolding. Yeah, that's probably not new for Canada or for Europe, but for other countries. The circular economy is the default in 2030. And ethical technology is going to be, uh, we're going to regulate it so it remains ethical in some way or the other. And the, matter, the multilateralism that we've had in the past, the working together is going to come back, despite all those supply chain issues and all that, right? That is my prognosis for the next 10 years. And really what we're seeing here is the sustainability revolution is in full swing and you ain't seen nothing yet as the song goes. You know, I used to be a musician, but you know, would, this, is like, this is like hitting a warp drive button. So green is the new digital right? and sustainable is the new profitable. 
And uh, ESG is one of those things where we're saying, yeah, that's pretty interesting, but you know what's happening there. But really what we need is investments in primary markets, not secondary markets to really drive this forward. And this revolution is comparable to what we're seeing right now with the technology revolution, the pushback against Facebook, all of the lying and, and the unethical behavior that we're seeing. That was just fine until, you know, a year or two ago. And now here's the bottom line that we're learning from the Facebook affair, right? It's time to pull the plug on making good money with doing bad things. Even if you're not criminal, which we can't say that Facebook is criminal, but it's certainly unethical. Is that the same thing now? Right. So interesting debate, right? And that is referring also, of course, to these questions, right? What is the beef industry doing? What is, what's going to happen in Glasgow? What's the big tech doing about technology? What is Saudi Arabia doing and the UAE about becoming a part of this, right? Making good money, doing bad things, that is ending. And so if that is kind of uh, what we're looking at, that's going to be a big change for a lot of industries. So, so my bottom line on this is we're heading towards a good future. But here's the thing, you know, we have to focus on the concept of what we're having here, the people, planet, purpose and prosperity concept. And we have to make powerful decisions. So basically, here's my answer. It's entirely possible that we have a great future, a kind of nirvana, if you wish, right? uh, a kind of uh, really powerful future where we all get to live longer and more collectively fairly distributed money. We just need to make the right decisions today. And the bottom line of this is, you know, we are certainly at this fork in the road moment, like Buckminster Fuller has said. We have 10 years, uh, well, we don't really have 10 years, but we have 10 years at the maximum to address issues like the waste issue, the circular economy, sustainability, that is really three, issues, three years here. And we're very close to 10 years runway until after that, it will be too difficult for us to return. So the good future is entirely possible. Let's make it happen. And let's remember the future is probably better than we think. I made a film about this called The Good Future. You can watch it at thegoodfuturefilm.com. It's in several languages as well. And trying to explain as to which way I'm looking at this. So I want to thank you very much for your time and your kind attention. I know this was a lot of stuff in just 10 minutes, trying to speak as fast as I can. And now let's have our debate and discussion. I really look forward to it. Thanks for listening. Bonjour à tous.